heavenly days Look at that sky It could have been raining It could have been dry It could have been cloudy It could have been clear It could have been sunshine It could have been dreams It could have been so many ways Heavenly days Heavenly days So what do we do? Dare to be different Dare to be true Bury the treasure Like we've always done We'll crawl from the wreckage And walk in the sun Fan in the flame Till it's ablaze Heavenly day Father's plan for your mother 
On behalf of Mary Jane and Taylor, I welcome you to this service of Christian worship and celebration in the covenant of marriage, both by the way of context of song and of scripture, of word and of vow. They will commit themselves to one another in one of the most ancient models of relationship known in our faith, that of the covenant in marriage. Christian covenant is not made in secret, nor in a vacuum. Christian covenant and commitment require an acknowledgement of God's presence, as well as the presence of witnesses. You and I today will be among those witnesses, but it is love that comes from God. Everyone who loves is a child of God and God's presence is assured by these words of Jesus. Wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am. Let us then worship God through a hymn, as in this place all are welcome. I invite you to take the sheets that were handed out to you coming in and let us join together in the singing of these hymns together.
Please be seated. Hmm? No, not Taylor and Mary Jane, I ask you, have you come here today freely and in good faith to commit your love, your trust, and your future to this covenant of marriage? If so, please respond together. I do. I do. And you who here are gathered today as family and as friends, as colleagues, do you celebrate these pledges that they are about to make today? And will you honor and respect them and do what is in your power to help Mary Jane and Taylor uphold this covenant of marriage? If you so commit to them, please respond, we will. We will. I think that's pretty firm. <laughs> in our Christian tradition, perhaps one of the most significant definitions of love was written by the Apostle Paul to the early church gathered in Corinth. The words written long ago in the first century loses none of its power nor spiritual imagination to us here in the 21st century. Listen again to these words crafted from the 13th chapter of Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. If I speak with eloquence, both human and angelic, but have no love, I become no more than blaring brass or crashing cymbal. If I have the gift of foretelling the future and hold in my mind not only all human knowledge, but the very secrets of God, and if I also have that absolute faith which can move mountains, but have no love, I amount to nothing at all. If I dispose of all that I have, yes, even if I give my own body to be burned, but have no love, I achieve precisely nothing. So now we move to our current centuries. And among contemporary writers of faith, none stands out more than James Kavanaugh. In this piece of prose, we hear his echo to Paul's own words. To love is not to possess, to own, or to imprison, nor to lose oneself in another. Love is to join and to separate, to walk alone and together, to find a laughing freedom that lonely isolation does not permit. It is finally to be able to be who we really are, no longer clinging in childish dependency, nor docilely living separate lives in silence. It is to be perfectly one's self and perfectly joined in permanent commitment to another and to one's own self. Love only endures when it moves like waves, receding and returning gently or passionately, or moving lovingly like the tide in the moon's own predictable harmony. Because finally, despite a child's scars, or an adult's deepest wounds, they are openly free to be who they really are and always secretly were in the very core of their being where true and lasting love can alone abide. Now these words are for the two of you. The words from Paul and from the Catholic poet James Kavanaugh say that love is a gift. In marriage, the covenant is the one human commitment that above all others requires utmost fidelity, trust, communication, and patience. 
It is a holy mystery in which two people become uniquely one in spirit and in meaning. The Apostle Paul, in his first letter to the Corinthian community, joins the imperatives of covenant love with the broader demands by God for justice in all human relationships. Thus the covenant becomes a unique promise of mutual respect, of nurture, and of care. Mary Jane, Taylor is God's gift to you, but she is not your gift alone. It is within God's will that in your love, Taylor might find a greater sense of who she is, reflective, caring, resilient, and creative, that she will make the world more tender and magical. You are asked by God to accept her fully for who she is and to bless her strengths as well as the areas still growing into wholeness. May Taylor find literally the realm of heaven through the vow of love you make and live into that truth as a reality. And so it is with you, Taylor, that although Mary Jane is God's gift to you, she is not intended for you alone. You are asked by God to love her, that in your love she might find who God created her to be, intelligent, brave, strong, and truthful, that many will be blessed by the presence of a person who shines brightly with life. You are asked to accept her fully for who she is and to bless her strengths and the areas still growing into wholeness. May Mary Jane know from this moment on that yours is a love on which she may forever depend. And so now to both of you, I charge you from this moment forward. Taylor, Mary Jane's needs will carry the same priority as your own. Mary Jane, from this point forward, Taylor's needs will be seen as important as your own. I charge each of you to not be as two competing forces, but rather let the energies of your lives be blended into a harmony that offers lasting wellness and health through the grace of God. In each moment, let healing, joy, and wholeness fulfill God's purpose in this marriage of your hearts and your spirits. May you look now to this covenant and know that because love has been found, God's yes is being added to your own. And to this end, celebrating your love and the love each of us have known, let us all now Join together in the singing of the joy when love is found. You will find it in the pew hymnals before you. It is hymn number 362. I invite you to remain seated, but please join in the singing of this affirmation of love, a recasting of Paul's and James Kavanaugh's own words.
Mary Jane and Taylor, you have chosen today to craft words that you wish to share as a part of making yourself a gift to the other. And then that will be followed by a common vow in covenant promise. Mary Jane, I'm going to ask you to speak first. Taylor, you are the most magical person that I have ever known. You are beautiful, brilliant, courageous, resilient, creative and caring. You are a playful and compassionate dog mom. <laughs> and I love raising our pack of precocious pooches together. <laughs> I'm so thankful that God placed you in my, into my life and has helped us grow into better versions of ourselves. I've learned so much from you about psychology, <laughs> the Bible, musical theater, <laughs> Renaissance fairs. <laughs> um, and I hope that you've learned some important things from me, like how the greatest sports teams are the Bulldogs, uh. the Raiders, and the A's. <laughs> I love how well we compliment one another. You are the flair to my focus. I'm good timing and you are good hearted. I appreciate how caring and encouraging you are to your students and your patients, always treating them with respect and dignity. You also take care of me, always encouraging me, even when I make you a little nervous and being my biggest cheerleader when I come up with wild ideas about fixing Fresno or some party I want to throw. You comfort me when I start to feel hopeless and sad. And you are always so brave when it comes to the things that I am afraid of. The world is beautiful because you are in it. And I am so blessed to have an amazing person to be my wife. I have so much fun with you, traveling around and exploring new foods and places all over California and in Arizona, Oregon, Washington, Mexico, Canada, Denmark, <laughs> and Sweden. <laughs> I cherish all of the memories we have made together as very best friends. I cannot wait for all the new adventures that lay before us. I am the luckiest. Janie, you're my good-hearted and good-timing woman, the entertainer, of my infinite questions, the answer to my prayers. You are the fingerprints of God's love, his hands, his feet. You are the steps beside me I have learned to count on. I cannot quantify my thankfulness for you and my love for you has no measure. You are the song I was meant to sing, karaoke style, <laughs> shameless, free, you hold the key to my heart. You unlock secrets I didn't know I had. You name my fears and nurture my courage along with my deepest hopes. In a world that chases dream girls, you are my awake girl, a clear consciousness, a reality more beautiful than any vision, dark curls, a smattering of stars. You're my truth seeker, truth speaker, joke teller, master chef, and fellow adventurer. You're my best friend, my true love, my partner in lawful activities. <laughs> <laughs> You're my rule breaker, status quo crusher, rebel with a cause. You are the reason I race home. And wherever you go, my heart is. I love you, Janie, and whatever the weather brings, 
howling wind, blistering storm. You will never be my Jonah thrown overboard. I will never abandon ship. With you, I have learned the lines are in our hands, not in our palms. And by God's grace, I will always find a way to hold you in this life and the next. You have shared some very personal, deep, and sacred words to one another. It's not any words that I say in front of you that's going to make your marriage real or enduring. It's going to be the integrity with which you live into these promises that you now make to one another. I'm going to invite you to take these which you have crafted together. And now I invite you to offer these words as a way of binding yourselves together in the covenant of marriage. I celebrate, I celebrate the, the gift, gift of you and our relationship, the ways in which you are different from me, the road we have traveled so far, and the journey ahead. I choose to live in covenant with you for the fullness and fulfillment of our lives. I promise to make our life together a testament to God's love, a living prayer that honors, honors his, his highest hopes. To join you in both work and play as we seek to serve others while living balanced healthy and healthy lives. lives. To care for you with a tender heart, sensitive to your needs, and nurturing the sacred places within you. To love you in light. To love even your shadows to accept you as the person you are now, affirming the person you strive to be, to be at your side in sorrow and in joy, in sickness and in health, to be transformed by all we share together. Through all our years, until death alone shall us part us in this world, I am committed to this covenant of profound faith, grace, and love. And all of God's people say amen. 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 Now we move from the word to the sign. We need symbols to express the inexpressible. And fidelity, which is the special pledged faithfulness of one to another, is most frequently signed by the exchange of a ring. And you have chosen to exchange rings as a sign and a witness to the vow that you have just made. And I'm going to invite Hayden, could you come forward now, please, and bring these rings? And bring them here, please. Thank you, Hayden. Thank you for not tying those in Boy Scout knots. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Bless now, O oh God, these rings that each gives and each receives. May Mary Jane and Taylor live in love with fidelity continuing in your service all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Mary Jane, I'm going to ask you to take the ring that is to be placed on the ring finger of Taylor's left hand. And as you place this ring upon her finger, please repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign. As a sign. Of my love and fidelity. Of my love and and fidelity. And Taylor, please repeat after me. I receive this ring. I receive this ring as a sign. As a sign of your love and fidelity. Of your love and fidelity. Taylor, will you please now take this ring and place it upon the ring finger of Mary Jane's left hand? And as before, repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring as a sign. As a sign of my love and fidelity. Of my love and fidelity. 
And Mary Jane, repeat after me. I receive this ring. I receive this ring. As a sign. As a sign. Of your love and fidelity. Of your love and fidelity. That pretty much does it. <laughs> oh, but, but, but wait a minute. There's a little bit more. A little bit more. Having expressed your commitment to one another, having invited the blessings of God and these who stand with you and gather here in front of you, and having exchanged signs of your pledged faithfulness to each other, it is my genuine pleasure to declare that from this moment on, in the eyes of God and the heart of the Christ who blesses you, and by the laws of the state of California, you are now truly married. And as the first act of your marriage, I invite you to share a kiss of peace. Amen and amen. Go ahead and take back your bouquet. Go ahead and take back your bouquet. Now there's one last but uh, very highly significant uh, thing that remains. In many cultures and in various religious traditions, including our own Christian tradition, there's a deeply mystical ritual that is done at weddings, and it's called hand fasting. Whether Celtic or Numibian, whether a wedding within the grandeur of a Westminster Abbey with Prince William and Kate, or along a riverbank in Zambia. This is a symbolic binding of the hands that has inspired the terms, the bonds of holy matrimony, or shortened to be tying the knot. Throughout history, in many different ways and in many different parts of the world, the hands of a couple marrying were bound as a sign of their commitment to one another. Cords, ribbons, or strips of cloth can be used in this hand fasting. The ribbons used today are not permanent. They are perishable, a reminder that all things of the material eventually return to the earth, unlike the bond and the connection that is love in the covenant, which is eternal. I'm going to ask you to very carefully take a step down into that top step. I'm going to thank you very much. We're going to bring the basket, and now I'm going to invite those who are going to participate, I'm going to call out to you, and I'm going to ask you to take with either side I call out and to stand in order. Eugenia, Lauren, Parm, Marilyn, Annabeth, Yami, Priscilla, Ken, Irma, Pauline, Regina, Tracy, And Terry. Tracy and Pauline, I think I need you over here. <laughs> Each of the ribbons represents a particular value that is bound together in this covenant of marriage. And so now I'm going to ask Eugenia to come and to take the red ribbon, tying it about their joined hands and wrists, red representing passion and strength. Lauren, you come and you take the orange ribbon. Orange today representing encouragement and kindness.
Parm. You come to take the yellow ribbon, representing joy and confidence. Marilyn, please come. And you'll take the green ribbon, representing health and prosperity. Annabeth, as you come, you'll receive the, the blue ribbon. This is an important one. It represents patience and devotion. <laughs> Yummy. Your ribbon is purple, and together it represents power and piety. Priscilla, your ribbon is black, but it represents wisdom and vision. Ken, I invite you now forward. And you'll take the white ribbon as it represents the singular and important value of peace. Irma. Irma? You take the gray ribbon, and gray represents balance and neutrality. Pauline, you receive the pink ribbon and offer that as a sign of truth and romance. Regina, the brown ribbon represents grounding and a sense of home. Tracy, Tracy, you take the gold ribbon, and this represents longevity and energy. And Terry, last but not least, the silver ribbon representing creativity and inspiration. I'm going to ask you all to take a step down. We hadn't practiced with a long train last night, so you're going to have to accept my back. But in the tradition of the Christian faith, the pastor, the minister, the priest's stole is then finally wrapped over these joined hands. And as your hands are now bound together, so your lives and your spirits are a union of love and of trust. Above you are the stars, beneath you is the earth. And this, like the stars, your love should be a constant source of light to one another. And like the earth, a firm foundation on which your lives, your love, and your trusts grow. So now may God, who blesses all families of the earth, the love of Christ, and the blessings of the Holy Spirit go with you, blessing now and forever your home, your love, your lives. Amen. It is my great
pleasure to present to you Mary Jane and Taylor, married to be partners in life for life. Beauty and the beauty. 